So this handout that I put into the network folder, handout number zero, step set up your station. You'll need to do this every time you come in. And the first few times will be slow just because you need to remember to do all of these things. Once all of this is done here, the final step 11, you can close that solution. I'm either going to talk about a project or a solution. I want to consistently call it one thing, but I'm going to forget. This is our project. Visual Studio calls it a solution. It's synonymous. So this was just a quick test project to make sure that Visual Studio is communicating with my device. That's done. I will close my solution. If we go back to the handout, we've got a few more to look at there. We've got, uh, we already have looked at uh, number one, how to set up Visual Studio. So we'll go to number two, Anatomy of a Visual Studio Project. So number two. I'll turn the printer on a little bit later if you'd like to copy some of these. Most of these are one page long. A couple of them are two pages long because there's a lot to look at. But again, this condenses everything we talked about last time, the anatomy of what this project is. It reminds you that you that in this class we need to create a blank app based on Apache Cordova, save it wherever you want. But it talks then about what that config XML file is, which we looked at previously. So here's a quick explanation of the items in that config XML file. Then we've got the res folder, that's where the icons in the splash screen are at. I've got a note here that the way that the splash screen works is by using the splash screen plugin. So we'll look at that today. Then the WW folder, which is basically the main project, is in this folder. Your HTML, your CSS, and your JavaScript. This is a very just informational handout. There's nothing really to do. It just tells you your main f items that you're going to work with, config XML, res folder, and the WW folder. I'm going to put these same links a couple of times in these different handouts. These are going to be the same over and over a bit so that hopefully you look at them. That's handout number two. You can print it later. Let's go to handout three, the WW folder. So you're going to do 99% of the work for your project in the, in the WW folder. You're going to do a couple of things in other areas, but most of it will happen in this folder. And basically, everything in this WW folder will be converted into the appropriate native code every time you do run. Visual Studio, behind the scenes, will use Cordova to compile your web code into the right code for the right platform. I break it down. I'm not going to read every one of these. You you should, but uh, I break down each of the template files, each of the files that are that is in the template. Whenever you create like an empty blank brand new document, that test file, I'm just showing you everything that's inside of a of a common starting point. I I mention here what does this line mean? What does that line mean? And just read that on your own, what's valuable for you to keep, what's valuable not to keep. In the CSS folder, there's a CSS file. You could delete that whole CSS file and use your own one if you want. And there's a couple of lines that you can keep there if you want. So just read through that. Most of what's in there you don't really need. That's based, that's CSS to style this template, which we're going to get rid of quickly. We're going to make our own project. So that's the CSS uh, file. In images folder, it, it is what it does, or it does what it is. It, it is what, it, what it's named. It's a folder for images. You put your images in there. Easy. There's a Cordova PNG file that you can delete if you want. Right In the images folder, there is a Cordova icon. You can keep it or not. It doesn't matter. And then in the scripts folder, there's two files, index.js, platform overrides. We'll look at platform overrides much later. But this is a way for you to write custom code that will apply for certain platforms. 
I want my iOS version of my app to have certain capabilities that are different from the Android one, for example. So we would use what is known as platform merges to override the code based on the platform. You can have CSS kick in to look to make your app look a certain way on Windows platform and a different way on Android platform and a different way on iOS platform. That again has to do with platform merges. And that's an active link that you can go read, which we will work with later. And then I go into detail about what is, what is inside of that JavaScript file. Be that on your own, it'll make sense when we do it a little later. Lines that you can remove, that you can keep. The ones that I mark very important are probably very important for you to keep. And then again, well, if you have the knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can create these cross-platform apps because Cordova will allow us to write rather universal code, which will then get translated to the right platform via Visual Studio. Visual Studio will let us write the code, debug the code for errors, and deploy the app to devices. This one is two pages long, and then again it's also got those same links as the previous handout. Let's take a look at number four. While it's true that we're just writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that usually creates just a website, we can use these common web languages to create cross-platform mobile apps via plugins. So all that you've learned in any HTML class to make a website still applies here. How to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Take that knowledge, and with more of the knowledge we learned this month for part two, we'll be able to make these apps. And one way is by using plugins. We looked at this briefly. Remember how we had the ability to make our app play, play the sound? That was a plugin. We wrote a little JavaScript, and then it played sound on the device. There's the how to steps of how to add a plugin, and there's basically core plugins and custom plugins. The core plugins are about 20 plugins that are commonly used. Dialog boxes, vibration, contacts, GPS. So how to add them? Very easy. And then links to go read the documentation on how the code works. Using the plugin, again, the big idea is you're going to need to read the documentation to understand what that code is. It's usually one line of code with several or various options. And then you have to write the code in the JavaScript file, in the on-device-ready function, and then any necessary HTML code in the HTML file. When we do run, Visual Studio will compile it to the right language per platform. Removing a plugin is also very easy. You return to the config XML file, you select the plugin you no longer want, you remove it. These plugins are also known perhaps as permissions. If you download an app, it's going to say this app would like permission to use your contacts. This app would like permissions to take a photo. This app would like permissions to record audio. If you click cancel, then you won't, you won't download the app. That's what's going to happen for your app as well. If you're going to make, let's say, a calculator app, why would you activate the plugin for geolocation? Why would you activate the plugin for camera? Someone's going to download your calculator app and it says, this app would like to use your camera. People will say, is this calculator going to spy on me? Why is it asking to use the camera? So I say here how to add a plugin and how to remove a plugin because even though we can add them all, you should only add the plugins that your app will use. If your app doesn't use Bluetooth, don't install the Bluetooth plugin. You can remove it if it's not necessary. And all of these plugins take up space. The app at the beginning is like one megabyte. As you add more code and more plugins, it becomes 5, 20, 50, you know, 70 megabytes for the ability to use all of these features. And if you're not using some of these features, uninstall the plugin so that it doesn't make your app big. Yes? 
Uh, yes, they come from the Cordova community repository, and this is where people can uh, check it and see that the that the plugins are okay. The ones that come from the core plugins, those are the ones that are the safest. These other ones, these custom plugins that don't come from the official website, those are not tested. Those you have to be more careful because it's anyone putting this plugin on their website, letting you download it, and yeah, it could be problematic. But the ones under the core screen, those are safe, definitely. And people, for example, in the App Store, then after one app, they check everything, make sure that everything in the any app is going to be antivirus that is harm to the system. If we publish our app on the Apple App Store, they take much more care to, to check all the submissions. If we upload to the Android App Store, they don't take any care. It's up to us as the community to say, this one had a virus. Then the Android App Store will remove it. But the Android App Store is very, very open. Anyone can put an app. The Apple App Store is very closed. They check it. And in the middle is the Amazon App Store. They will check it a little bit, not as much as Apple, but not as little as Android, and it's kind of in the middle. Then we've got uh, the custom one. Here's an example. We'll do this later. But if there are any plugins that are outside of the core 20, you will be able to go do a Google search, uh, for example, Cordova plugin headphones. And someone might have a plugin out there that accesses the headphones or something. You know how these some of these modern headphones, they've got uh, like a little up and down volume and such. Conceivably, I suppose someone can write a plugin that accesses the button so that when you triple tap a button, it does something. Is that the game that you have to figure stuff out? It's like you have to plug in your charger. Oh, okay. Interesting. Huh. Like a discovery kind of scavenger hunt on your phone. So someone probably wrote some kind of plugin to address some kind of issue. One of the things we will do in the class later on is in our CBDB app, I want to be able to scan the barcode of my comic. At the cover of the comic, there's a barcode. I want to scan it and read that information. Well, that'll work great for any sort of inventory app, right? If I've got some sort of product, I need to mark all of these products into my inventory, I'm going to scan my products. The barcode scanner plugin is not one of the core ones, but it is one that I have checked out and it's pretty safe. And I just talk about it right here, that you go search for it. Sometimes you get results that say PhoneGap plugin. PhoneGap and Cordova are basically the same thing. Later we can talk about the differences, the nuances, but if you ever see a tutorial, how to create an app with PhoneGap. It's basically how to create an app with Cordova. Cordova and PhoneGap are the same, basically. So you would add that other plugin that is not a core plugin by reading the instructions of the particular plugin. Here's an example. We'll use it later. The barcode scanner. You go read their website. They tell you basically you use this plugin ID. And in the config XML file, you use that ID, you click install, and you've got that plugin. You then need to read the plugin's documentation, how it works. Yeah, my app now has the ability to scan barcodes. But how does it do it, and what do you do with the code? So plugins allow us to upgrade our simple websites to full-featured mobile apps. The challenge is finding the right plugin and learning how to use it. On this one, I do have a further reading that is different. This goes off to the big uh, Apache Cordova uh, main repository of, of plugins, which will actually part, be part of your weekend homework. I have scheduled, and it already was published, a message from Blackboard. You, you, it was sent out at 6.05. There's a new message on uh, Blackboard that tells you over the weekend you have a task to do on this website. So after class, you can check it. These handouts and more that I will be creating will again put together, will, will replace a book 
I don't have a book to recommend. This stuff is so cutting edge, there's no books really that are current to cover all that I want to cover. There's a lot of good books on Cordova that you can go find, but it says, you know, 2015. And in 2015, in internet time, that's ancient. So we're kind of creating things on the fly here. Any questions on any of the handouts or general things of the class so far? There is a there should be a new blackboard discussion uh, forum. There should there was last week was week one and there should be a new week two. It might not have activated yet, but there should be a new one coming. Okay, okay so I want to start working with a real project now on Thursday last week. We created test one, just to kind of acclimate ourselves to Visual Studio. On Tuesday, we did the same. We went created test two. We played around with some code. That project was not necessary for you to keep. We're going to start a new project again one more time, but this time I do want you to save it and keep it, and we're going to keep using that file every time we come back. I'll be putting a copy of my work in the network folder, of course, but now we're going to start to work for real on a real project that we will continue throughout this semester and the next month. You should be in Visual Studio. If you previously had any project open, let's go to File Close Solution.